Maraca.
Happy Easter, Beth. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Hello, Rogers. Happy Easter.
Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God's, God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right and acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced. 
how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. 
Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, If you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. God, the creator, redeemer, and sustainer of our world. Amen. Amen. Early in the morning, while it was still dark, Mary walked to the tomb. Her heart was broken, her body was tired, and her mind was full of memories and grief. Two weeks earlier, Jesus had raised her brother from the dead. A few days before they had gathered again for supper, she had anointed his feet with oil. They all knew that Jesus was taking risks, that he was making enemies. But surely he'd be okay. There was nothing he couldn't do. That's what she believed until the night it all unraveled. Then she watched him die 
she saw the life go out of his eyes. You can imagine all these memories swirling through Mary's mind as she approached the tomb. She gets there and finds it empty. Immediately she assumes someone has taken his body and it's all too much. The weight of it comes crashing down on her and she breaks down and weeps. Any of us would do the same. Two angels appear to comfort her, but it's no use. Jesus himself appears, but he's different somehow, and she takes him for the gardener. The resurrection is unfolding before Mary's eyes, and she can't see it. It's like she's too close. She can't see through the fog. Not until Jesus speaks her name. And all at once, the dawn of Easter breaks. In some ways, Mary is the key to the resurrection story. Because she is our entry point. We don't see what's happening with Jesus. We don't get to peek behind the stone. So the whole scene plays out through Mary's eyes. And her reaction is so relatable and real. How many times have we been too close to something to see beyond it? When worries mount, when sorrow strikes, when life feels too hectic or too hard, it's almost impossible in those moments to see the bigger picture. It takes time, and often some dramatic shift in perspective before we can see a new horizon. Years ago, I was in London, and I walked into St. Paul's Cathedral, one of the great churches of our tradition. And instead of going right into the main sanctuary, there were partitions set up, so visitors were steered through a side passage. It opened up onto a large wall, and there was an art exhibit of some kind. It was a compilation of dozens of photographs, snapshots of people's faces up close, people from every age and and stage and walk of life. Some looked happy and and healthy and smiling. Others looked broken or hungry or afraid. They were young and old, men and women, black and white and brown. It was the full spectrum of humanity. I don't remember there being much in the way of a description or an explanation, so I looked for a few moments and continued on through the passageway. But the way it curved around, just as you came out to exit into the main church, you were made to turn around and look back at the wall where the exhibit was. Except now, from that distance, it was a huge canvas. Forty or or fifty feet up the wall, there were now hundreds more photographs. And from that distance, you couldn't make out the individual faces any longer. Instead, they all blended together to form one larger image. It was the face of Jesus. Sometimes in life, we're too close to see the bigger picture. Sometimes the fog of grief or war or illness 
clouds our vision. We can only see what's in front of us, and the promise of resurrection seems too far away. Maybe some of you feel that way now. Maybe even surrounded by brass and lilies and alleluias, your mind is still on your struggling child or grandchild, your sick spouse. Maybe you're thinking about war in the Holy Land or the bridge collapsing in Baltimore. Whatever it is you're carrying on your heart in this place, know that it is okay. It's okay to bring it here, even and especially on Easter, and to scatter it in front of the altar, like so many snapshots. You don't have to hide it away or pretend it's not there. Easter is not about ignoring the hard realities of our lives. No, Easter is bigger than that. Easter is about bringing the long horizon of God's love into focus. The whole arc of the gospel is Jesus desperately trying to move us from blindness to sight. And finally, today we see. We see that nothing, not even death, can separate us from the love of God. We see that from the dawn of creation to the dawn of Easter morning, God has been showing us that we are never lost and never alone. From the Garden of Eden to the Garden of Gethsemane, God has always brought forth new life. And so it is today. On this happy morning, God gathers up the snapshots of our lives, the hurts and the hopes of our whole world, and rearranges them into a promise a portrait of resurrection. If you step back far enough, you'll find that it looks a lot like Jesus, who is our eternal reminder that life is stronger than death and that love will always find a way. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. 
He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and the world. In the work we do this day, may the risen Christ teach us. In the challenges we face this day, may the risen Christ guide us. Through the people we meet this day, may the risen Christ renew us. As we respond to the hungers and hurts of this world, especially those who suffer in the Holy Land, Eastern Europe, and all places of conflict, may the risen Christ compel us. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. We remember all who have died. Give to the departed eternal rest. And let light perpetual shine upon them. Let us pray for our own needs and the needs of others. We pray for Barbara, Patricia, LaRocca, Mates, and all those who have died since last Easter. Grant us, O God, so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with Christ in the joy of his resurrection. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Welcome all and happy Easter. Thank you. It is wonderful to be with you, uh, to be together, uh, to celebrate this day of resurrection. Thank you all uh, for being here. Those who are here in person, those in our overflow room, those joining us online, you are all part of our fellowship on this uh, joyful day. Um, I'm John Roars, the rector here on behalf of of all of my colleagues and all of our worship leaders today, a welcome. A special welcome to any visitors who may be with us. It's wonderful uh, to have you. There are some visitor cards in the pews. Uh, There's also a QR code at the bottom of the Spirit, our newsletter. Uh, We'd love to know that you are here. And there's visitor guides at each of the doors to take with you and learn more about the fellowship of this church. Um, All of you, please join us for a reception uh, out to my right in the courtyards all along here. The food is delicious and the day is beautiful, so please continue uh, the celebration together. Uh, A big word of thanks uh, to all of those who have made the journey of this week possible, Um, to all of our staff, all the volunteers, our worship leaders, acolytes, ushers, greeters, chalice bearers, all the rest, our musicians, um, and our choirs who have done such a beautiful job uh, lifting our hearts in in song uh, this week. 
Um, and also to all of those behind the scenes, the altar guild, the flower guild, and all the rest uh, who bring uh, the beauty of this day to life. Thank you to all of them and to all of you. <clears throat> Again, this is the Spirit, our newsletter. Take it with you. There is lots happening in the days and weeks to come, and we would love uh, to see you again soon. Um, just to point out one thing, at the end of April, the last weekend in April, uh, the 26th to the 28th, we're going to have a special weekend-long series of events and services to commemorate the 50th uh, anniversary of the first ordination of women in the Episcopal Church. Um, there's a, a flyer you can find on the information table that lists out all of those activities. Um, and one of the highlights is going to be welcoming back a number of women who have served here over the years. So Claudia Merritt, uh, Wheezy Blanchard, Penny Nash, Margaret Austin, all are going to come back and take part in the activities uh, that weekend. So please mark your calendars and plan to join us. Finally, some notes about our celebration of Holy Communion. Um, all are welcome at the altar in this place, and our altar also extends to your pew. If you need us to bring the sacrament to you, just let one of the ushers know. And there are other detailed instructions in your bulletin. Uh, the communion stations at this service are at the high altar behind me and at each of the side chapels. Um, if the, the folks from the overflow uh, will come in first, and there will be a, a separate communion station there at the baptismal font. Um, so those folks will receive there first, and then you all in the back section will follow them, starting from the back and moving forward in that back section, if that makes sense. Um, and those who come to the high altar, it would be wonderful if a good many of you as many as possible, could come out through this side hallway so we don't have quite the traffic jam here in the middle. Um, that would be great. Again, thank you all for being here on this joyful day. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give a thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you, for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us, and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take Eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, and we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. 
We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with blessed Stephen, the blessed Virgin Mary, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. This is the table, not of the church, but of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love him and for those who want to love him more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little, you who have been here often and you who have not been here long, you who have tried to follow and you who have failed. Come because it is the Lord who invites you. It is his will that those who want him should meet him here.
Amy, we send you out to share communion with Julie and Tom Imason. Carry the prayers of all of us as you take this sacrament of Christ's presence. We who are many are one body because we share one bread and one cup. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be on you this day and remain with you always.
Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia.